controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Today, we are talking about antiviral medication. How is it going to help us in treating COVID-19? And where are we at with clinical trials? And when can we start to expect to be using this medication? Hello, hello, hello. It's Mitch. And it's Greg. (laughs) Welcome back to Side Note. Um, Shout out to all the people who watched the podcast on YouTube last time. It actually went out. It actually worked. (laughs) We uploaded a video on YouTube. Who knew we could even do it? Um, If you're listening to this podcast and you haven't seen our beautiful voices before you can check it out as side note podcast on youtube and then for anyone who's from you know watching asap science videos coming here just to give you a quick uh brief of how the podcast works if you're new basically we start the episodes always with a little what would you say greg a check up a little check up oh that's welcome nice to the doctor's thing. office time for a check up, we check catch up. up then we do uh what did you learn this week which is covering sort of the science that's come out this week or some interesting thing that we have learned over the course of the last week and then we actually jump into study time and that's where we talk about the subject matter of the episode so in this case we'll be talking about antivirals and coronavirus then so if you do just want to jump straight Right there because maybe you came from an ASAP science video we'll uh, link out the times so you can go there otherwise you can hang out with us it's a much more casual environment than ASAP science which is just purely scripted but hopefully just as educational and, and if you're listening to this and you're like what there's a video what just relax keep listening to this keep <laughs> washing the dishes which I sure is what you're doing because that's all I've done for the last week is wash dishes okay yes in isolation we have been cooking more than ever would you say than ever in our life I mean, like, when else have we ever been stuck at home? It's made me cook? realize that we eat out more than I realize, or just quickly grab something, or we're I at the always, office. Or... Like, I always thought we ate out a lot. I think sometimes you'd be like, no, it's normal, it's normal. And I was like, no, Mitch, I think we are not normal. <laughs> and I think now we're realizing how how much we ate out like maybe i just sorry. <laughs> you still don't. i think lots of young people who are like work in like downtown are eating out a lot because it's so much faster they gotta pick up a salad on the way home from and chopped. it's so exhausting after a long day of work to then come home and make an entire meal which can take hours sometimes if you want to make something yummy and then if you're prepping for the whole week or you're trying to make a lot of it like it can how be a lot i realize we spend so much more time cooking and cleaning now because we're home all the time yeah that's true and so there's just constantly dishes everywhere because every meal we make requires like how many pots and pans i'm also not very like conservative with my dishes if i'm making something things it's gonna (laughs) explode the kitchen but no what's gonna be the result a delicious meal fair but then i always have to clean your dishes and you actually i feel like i love making like stews or things that all fit in one pot because it's so nice to just put it all in and you really don't have that many dishes whereas i like to be a little bit complex i want to you know make sure that like the tofu has been roasted fried and then baked you know what i mean whereas you know yours is like okay throw it all into a pot okay kidding wow Wow. don't come for someone's cooking that's don't come for my culture my family is indian so that's how you cook you throw it all in one pot yeah that's true i am white we have no culture we make a meat pie you, if you ever want to learn how to make a meat pie come have to you me. ever made a meat pie? no actually it's disgusting i taught in the uk for a year and they were like you gotta try the meat pies and i was like this is actually disgusting how is this our culture no wonder we have gout anyway <laughs> it's not even canadian culture no of we've course got not canadian poutine, culture. we've got beaver tail no i'm talking about me as thing. a british person me as someone with british ancestry okay okay um how have you been otherwise um today i was listening to avril lavigne and it helped okay so <laughs> things are not looking great for greg um, i feel like we've been thinking about doing an episode on mental health and quarantine and isolation so if you think that's a good idea let us know because i think there are imagine someone like no i don't want to uh, listen about mental health and quarantine well i mean maybe even an asap science whole episode that covers that as well because it's obviously lots of people are thinking about this right now and contemplating what it means to be sort of trapped inside for potentially a very extended period of time did so. you say bro potentially bro potentially <laughs> yeah definitely um yeah just no, hitting I, up our target audience one thing <laughs> that we have been doing with our friends which is a fun game it's called when will we be able to eat at a restaurant again with friends? And the person who guesses the date closest will have that meal paid for them. And right now we have a smattering of dates from June all the way into the middle of September. So that's, I would love people to in the comments below. Now we can say that on YouTube. Guess what day if you are in, let's say, let's say Canada. We'll say, you know what, America, we're always talking about you. Okay. <laughs> it's about Canada this time. And to be honest, 
I don't know, America, right now, coronavirus, I'm really worried for you. I'm also worried for Canada. I'm worried for everyone. But in Canada, when do you think you could eat at a restaurant with friends? And that can include, so my guests also thought that we might end up going back into isolation after. That maybe they'll slowly ease up restrictions and allow X amount of people into restaurants, but then maybe we'll have to keep social distancing and maybe they'll close down again in, in phases. So it's more about like the first time you could go with some friends to a restaurant. So you're already preemptively I think it's important that people, a second wave. I do think it's important that people anticipate, uh, even Dr. Fauci has said, you know, we're really looking to the Southern hemisphere now to see if this will be a seasonal virus. So as the Southern hemisphere goes into their winters, will cases spike even more? If so, he said, we should expect in our fall and winter that we'll see cases spike. Wow. Again. I love Fauci. I love, love, love. And I love that saying that makes Trump mad. So I'm just going to say it one more time. I love Fauci. <laughs> And let's move on to what we learned this week. Okay. Oh, I messed up the sound effect. See, live people. Oh, oh, what did we learn this week? I got I it. I love that. That was real. That was that was that was that was honest. That was raw. That was crisp, like an apple. I just want everyone to know that I am left responsible for all the technology in this family house. <laughs> uh, Mitch, okay, we're just we're in quarantine. We're gonna start fighting. Mitch is always to bl- always the victim, never to blame. And then Greg said, "I'm just like Trump the other day," and it was like that, I didn't know you. I, you said I don't know why I said that. That's horrible. We honestly haven't been fighting that much, but okay. Well, no, we have lots of these podcasts to talk about. True. Our fights. Let's not talk about. Okay, it. what did you learn this week, Greg? So I was reading um, in Nature magazine, which is fun to read sometimes just looking at all the things outside of coronavirus. It's like <laughs> they're still having to publish because they can't publish things about coronavirus yet. It's too early in a lot of cases. Like, so I'm still reading all these studies about random things and I'm just in my head. I'm like, this is meaningless, but it's not, it's not meaningless. <laughs> right. But, but your brain, our brains are yeah, all so somewhere else right now. So somewhere else that I used to read these nature magazines and be like, fascinating. Let's make a video about it. But now I'm just like, okay, whatever. But anyways. Well, uh, do, do you have a study that's not related to coronavirus? No, it's not related to coronavirus. Okay, it's about neither. So there you go. I think okay. that's a nice thing to yes. be saying. There is still other amazing work going on in the world that we can highlight to maybe take But as off. science communicators, it is hard to think about mm-hmm. other things. But yeah. so researchers examined the jaws and teeth of 18 Viking men and women that they found in a Swedish graveyard on an island in Sweden recently. So archaeologists found this, scientists found this, and they were sort of going on and on about realizing how they would have had really pronounced signs of infected gums. They were able to see how many cavities they had. uh, That's amazing. Science. Yeah. To be able to, like, how old will these be? Do you know? Vikings. I don't know the exact date, but that's a long time ago. Okay. It's, before... so it's just amazing to, like, know if, just to use bones or teeth to find out such interesting information about. Vikings people. were, um, according <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> according to science, the first people to ever come to parts of what are now Canada. And the eastern coast of Canada, Vikings came before uh, European set, like, I mean, they're, I guess you would consider European now, but before like the French or the British, mm. which is like what a lot of our country's heritage is based right. on. So Vikings were actually here before that. So that's just giving you a timeline of when Vikings would have come. But our pri- previous Canadian administration tried to minimize that science because it didn't sort of coincide with like, like the, the Eurocentric, the Eurocentric view of, view of British. <laughs> yes. Isn't that insane? Anyway, so that's just a timeline of Vikings before the British and French came to Canada. So, Anyways, they were like, they have tons of cavities and it's probably because they ate so much fruit and berries and they ate lots of honey and mead. And they were just going on and on about how many cavities these Vikings had because they didn't have dentistry. And then at the end they go, but even though they didn't have dentistry, modern humans still have more cavities than Vikings. And I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Even though they like, they had so many cavities. I was like, you buried the lead on that one. Like that, like, I feel like the, the headline, this is my science communication brain. Come on there. Nature should have been like. Vikings have less cavities than modern humans do, which is I guess interesting. That is interesting because in one way I'm surprised. In my mind, I'm like, oh, um, primitive humans and probably Neanderthals and like didn't really have cavities because they weren't eating. So so much of my brain goes to processed foods. I guess sugar period. So if you're eating lots of fruit, fruit and, honey, and honey, that is yeah, going to cause it. Yeah. Um, but I would be, I guess the headline seems shocking to know that they even still had lots of cavities. So that might have seemed like the oh, more wow. interesting I had perspective. The, I had the different perspective, which was like, of course they didn't like they had 
more cavities than we do because they're disgusting. You know what right, I mean? Like they but maybe didn't no, you're right. Like <laughs> they didn't eat like um, fun dips or right. whatever. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> Imagine giving a Viking a fun dip. They would lose their money. They would like. But run I guess in like circles. sometimes I eat some fruit, like mangoes, and I'm like, this is better than candy. Do you not agree? Yeah, I agree. Of course, like I. There do. are certain fruits, like not all nature's of them, candy, nature's but some, candy. and like honey to come across that. You like maybe they'd be like fun dips. Actually, not that good. Fresh blueberries picked <laughs> in the summer, my friend, better than a jube jube. <laughs> Actually, I don't really like jube jubes. Is that what they're called? Yeah, jube, but they're jube. But there's something like different somewhere else. No, let's not get into it. Okay. On. We don't have no um, Okay, so this week I learned about a study that was just complete. Not so much a study, but a trial where scientists developed an artificial intelligence that can turn brain activity into text. Text being the speech. So the whole premise was, can we get you to think something and then have it written out by a computer? Uh, so they Whoa. basically it's still in early stages, but obviously the benefit of that would be especially for people who can't speak or even maybe people who are, um, you know, not in a full coma, but can think but aren't able to function their body. And that might be a way for them to communicate. So these are they were able to get AI. Wait. How does that mean? Like AI picture has like coding and like yeah, so like neural networks. So they would basically monitor the brains. The way they set it up is they had people reading fifty different sentences while a neural monitoring computer would be oh. watching their brains react and trying to put together patterns of okay, when the brain fires in this way, it must suggest that these are the words. So in the first place, huh. they're actually making the people speak out loud as opposed to just having them think this is how the computer learns so i say a sentence like i went to the grocery store yesterday and the computer is monitoring my brain to see okay that's how that sentence looks now when they say the 49 other sentences let's cross reference and figure out if we can find patterns and the way that the brain waves work it is still only at that stage so it's only capable of doing it when people speak so that's not very oh not useful when, okay but they're trying because, to get to the point yeah because obviously you could just like speak to Google or Siri and, and it, yeah. can, it can dictate what you're saying out loud. But the idea is that it's slowly trying to huh. learn and test and the computer is testing itself against other results to figure out if it can ultimately cool. uh, translate brainwaves into speech, which I thought cool. Was I'm cool. so happy to hear about all this fascinating science happening around and outside of the fact that there is a pandemic. I, well, I just, um, we can't I, stop everything. We can't. I do other little facts. I just have my little notes here. So, in the best case, this um, system had 3% error, which they said is better than human transcribers, like professional human transcribers, which have an error rate of around 5% with what words people are saying. Huh. So that was pretty impressive. And it's a really exciting step forward because typically this would take millions of hours of setting up people speaking. I didn't know where you were going to say millions of years. Millions <laughs> of hours versus this setup took 40 minutes. So each person would just do the 50 sentences, the setup for the computer to learn them, and then it would do pretty good job. Job at Wait, millions of hours of what of a com of a computer learning of training a person uh, like a system to understand your brain in particular it would take millions of hours of them uh, studying your brain and understanding that whereas these computers now have been brought to the level where they can take that information and start to teach themselves wow so remember when we used to all freak out about how like ai robots <laughs> were going to take over the world paused on that thought for a bit but that's still going to come back when we're all out into the <sighs> do you think the world's going to go back to normal or do you think this is going to shift everything it thinks we'll go back to normal but i definitely think this will have a huge for everlasting impact on a lot of things different industries different professions even i was thinking about reading this study about ai and how maybe more and more we'll rely on robots to help the stop yes. the spread of disease and things like that so in a case like this if we yes. did have it set up so robots would just deliver us groceries and stuff or you know if we didn't have to have those checkpoints of necessary oh my gosh this is freaking me out because i'm like i want it to be a net positive but right, then that's I, a little bit freaky well i'm just like you know there's there's prior to what you even just came out of your mouth i think there's a lot of like importance in like regulating uh ai and robots but then i'm like and i'm like oh i really want this pandemic to have a net positive on society but i could also see it like skyrocketing 
past regulations towards things like that where we're all of a sudden like we need robots yes. to be able to take care of us in pandemics and it's like no maybe we don't that has oh. been one other concern is that the amount of sort of privacy people might be willing to give up right now yes. is a law and will governments take advantage and of that and it's like i want my government like to figure things out quickly and therefore they need to have like more overreach and it's like are we then like what are we too yeah, much power off. like exactly what, what? Oh. yeah let's not overthink that right now i think we should go into the topic of the week which <laughs> yes. is antivirals are you ready you're going yes. to study time yes, see if yes, i can hit yes. the right button this time study time study time study time, study time. okay i got it <laughs> so this week know what i must say just off the top, I haven't had my second coffee of the day. So oh, no. You Do are we about to take a break. <laughs> flip the table in front of us. Scream. Become the Hulk. Uh, That's definitely not a lie. Um, Greg gets really cranky without a second coffee, and I'm thankful that there's not only microphones, but a camera to record it. Yeah, if it happens, I feel like this will keep you happy. I mean, like, okay, the it, second the camera turns <laughs> off, it's going to be like, or, get out of my way. <laughs> it could have been during this podcast. I'd be like, okay, Mitch, yeah, that was a stupid question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so the thing is that this, I really focused on the research for this video. So I've been the one who's been reading the studies and who actually wrote this episode. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a little different. Usually we go back and forth between studies, but Mitch, you're going to like, yeah, I, I figured it, bit. yeah, it would be a good opportunity it. for me to kind of play the person. I mean, I've obviously listened in, to podcasts and read a lot. You're about, like, I'm obviously, I'm smart. educated, but I want to play the role of someone who doesn't know that much in this case. <laughs> I don't know anything. And also, um, I've just read like, 10 studies about recent coronavirus. Like, it's like there's still lots of stuff. Yeah, and there's not professionals noticed. who are still figuring this out because it is very current. So everything we say today, not take with a grain of salt, but know that it's constantly evolving and, and changing. changing. And day to day, everything, even every video we make now, we have to make it clear when we made it because in three days, in a week, in a month, it could look entirely different. So I figured, Greg, maybe you could first start by ultimately want to get to the antiviral and therapeutic treatments that are being tested for... COVID-19. Yeah. But can we talk about just antivirals in general? What is an antiviral? So uh, antiviral medication and treatments as opposed to a vaccine are different. So we talked last week about vaccines. It's a way that you actually inoculate your body to have its own immune response build in a way to fight a virus. These treatments are actually sort of hijacking your cellular biology to help you fight the virus in order to allow your immune response to get the upper hand and therefore, you know, save you, make you feel better, etc. So you're not actually giving someone the immunity through their immune system. You're just helping them through a treatment that affects their cells to essentially allow your immune system to get the upper hand. So it is in some ways still impacting your immune system or is it affecting the virus directly? It or can, is there a, depending a on the antiviral variety? medication. It could affect your immune system, but for the most part, it's helping to stop the replication of the virus, slow down the ability for the virus to replicate and take over so that your immune response can, again, take the upper hand and actually kill it itself. Although sometimes they kill it, depends on the drug. We'll get into that. So, so to clarify then, the difference between vaccine and antiviral for the most part, a vaccine would be used as a preventative measure yes. to yes, yes, get yes. your immune system ready. And an antiviral would be used. Would it only be used when you contract the virus? Or it could be used. Uh, so, for example, if you think about malaria, which is something that's been talked about a lot with this chloroquine mm-hmm. antiviral, which Donald Trump spoke way too early about on national television. More to come on that. Um, but that is uh, has antiviral properties as a drug. But malaria is actually a parasite, which is kind okay. of interesting. Oh, so but it's that drug has been designed to impact the parasite. Yes. And it. In low doses, it is preventative plus a treatment. So okay. you might have taken it when you're going to a place where you know there is malaria. Uh, okay. So it has preventative um, measures Properties. if you know you're going to be exposed to something like malaria. While also it is a treatment if for whatever reason you get malaria uh, and you will still get it after having it already. Right. Okay. So That's interesting. Okay. So they're kind of versatile, but ultimately vaccines are the f- truly preventative only. And so I think the most important thing to know about antiviral medication is that there's a lot of different types of them a lot of the time when you take them it's like called a cocktail (laughs) which is that (laughs) it's more than one mixed together because depending on your symptoms where you're at uh with the virus affecting your body maybe you have organ failure like it's going to be different for each person which is part of the reason why what donald trump is said is so dangerous is because 
unlike a vaccine, which is very much designed for a specific virus and to do a specific thing in everyone, antiviral medication uh, will differ depending on your symptoms and depending on who you are and past history, Hmm. et cetera. And there's a lot more uh, different types of them. And there's a really big push to continue to look at all different types of antiviral medication right now for COVID-19 because in case it mutates or right. the actual best treatment might involve three separate drugs being used simultaneously to do I different see. things. So they all tackle it from a different angle. I guess that's what I've sort of read has been happening, like happened in China where they were just giving a bunch of different antiviral drugs because they were hoping that any, the combination of these or all three of these, or maybe one of them or maybe none of them, but it was just the idea that, Hey, let's throw all this at the wall and just hope that one of them works. Exactly. Yeah. Um, What was I going to ask about? So antivirals in general, can you describe any of the mechanisms by which they work? I know there's obviously such a range, but can we have some examples of how it, so you swallow it, it gets into your bloodstream and then what? So the main um, mechanism that a lot of antivirals focus on is inhibiting something called viral RNA polymerase, which I don't know. Do you remember polymerase from cell bio? I love polymerase. Yeah, but now I'm forgetting which one polymerase. No, that's fair. So ACE, if it ends in A-S-E, it is an enzyme, which is made, by definition, is a protein. So um, that specific enzyme, what it does is it reads the RNA and it it, uh, duplicates the RNA strands, for example. So if a virus infects your cell, it needs the RNA the viral RNA polymerase to then go and start replicating the right. RNA. Okay. So without polymerase, you're not going to be able to repl- like duplicate that yes. RNA or DNA or whatever. Yes. So there's something. different types of polymerase. There's the one that you pro- we would have studied a lot more, which is like the one that actually reads the DNA. Right. The one you probably remember is like, it's split. remember like the, the, the double stranded DNA, uh, the double helix unwound. all unwound. Yeah. And then it Single reads strands. one side and it makes the RNA. And then right. that RNA goes to the ribosome to make the proteins. And that's literally how you exist. It's the coolest freaking thing. Literally getting shivers. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane that this happens in your body all the freaking time. And it's the only reason that you can. And like, we're just like sitting here all in like isolation. On like, yeah, just like, I'm bored. And your body's like, <laughs> make it, make it. oh my God, that's, that's a good a TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, that's right. That's not so sad that we think in TikToks now. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, that's so true. Like when, if you think about yourself just on Instagram, your body is literally looking, working in the most miraculous yeah. way. Although I shouldn't say miracles. No, not sorry, miraculous. Something to do with miracles. That's very Trump of me to say miracle drug. Um, so that specific RNA polymerase is a focus of a lot of antiviral medication. Um, but if you think about, like, for example, in our video, we talk about hepatitis C and we talk about a specific drug that uh, isn't even the most important drug for that for hepatitis C right now. But what it does is it it does uh, boost uh, your immune response in some cases. It does actually just use um, molecules that are essential for the virus. It, it literally just goes in your cell and starts using up other molecules within mm. your cell that would be used for the virus, therefore slowing down the virus's ability to use parts of your cell. And it also mutates It also mutates the actual viral RNA after it's already been transcribed. So it does all these separate things, which is important for people to understand that there's no such thing as this drug that just shows up, boom, 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 and just like shoots the virus. virus Yeah, it's doing all these things to your cellular own cells, mechanisms to your own body to then allow the replication of the virus to slow down to allow yourself to get the upper hand but you know it comes at risks and there's side effects etc okay i wanted to bring up an analogy that made me think of that might relate to other people coffee's kind of like that too right so you have adh that builds up in your brain that makes you tired that anti-diuretic to, hormone yeah that binds to different is am i saying the right thing that binds to your brain uh receptors and then the coffee and caffeine goes to your brain and blocks those receptors in order to keep you awake and make you not tired so it's that same idea that instead of like destroying the specific thing, you're actually just using up another part of the body so it can't function properly. Yeah, exactly. That is, yeah, that that, 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 that makes sense. Are there, you you mentioned that there's risks associated with antivirals. Is that because we're using the cell in a way that now even it maybe can't fully function properly or kind of getting in the middle of, you know, like, yes, we're stopping the virus, but now we're also maybe blocking up it's not that, that pathway is simple. Like, okay, yes, it's not that simple. And again, there's like so many people who would know more about this than I do. I, I've just read a bunch of studies on this, but from what I gather is what ends up happening is that, for example, that drug I just talked about, it's called ribavirin and it's, it's used for 
people who have hepatitis C under specific circumstances because it actually causes inflammation in your lungs, which would not necessarily be a good thing to give to someone uh-huh. right now who has yes. coronavirus. Uh-huh. Or it causes So fatigue. in a normal circumstance, that might not be a big problem if you are if you have healthy lungs. This is why it's important right, to it listen depends, to doctors. And it depends on the disease it's creating, right? Like the ultimate side effects, why certain antivirals may not be the best choice. Even if they could kill the virus, maybe now your lungs are having a harder time. But coping. even outside of that, it's like if you go into uh, the ER right now with coronavirus, but you have other issues, that's why it's so important that everyone listens to healthcare professionals other and issues? doctors. You, you might have diabetes and go in... Th- and have right. coronavirus okay. and then the doctor has to go and learn about who you are right. your past and what is an appropriate and then go okay now this antiviral medication i know won't necessarily exasperate these other issues you have mm. so we can administer it it's why what again donald trump said is so dangerous because it's undermining healthcare professionals and doctors who actually have a holistic approach to these things and can understand what antiviral could be used at a specific important time. So chloroquine is the one that Donald Trump talked about, and that might work better for someone other than someone else based on the side effects and based on how it actually works from like a cellular perspective. And like well, a biological yeah, perspective. I kind of want to talk about that a bit because this is, and I know we fe- like talked about this in the video. The problem isn't just that, well, A, he might be wrong because there's some studies that are showing it does work. Some studies are showing that it has had no impact. Um, but So it's not just about that, though. It's about this idea that it hasn't fully been tested yet. And so, yes, it's great if we can be excited. There's another way to say it is what I think is the problem. The way he touted it, we saw instantly results of people trying, taking versions of it at home, finding it in their cabinets. like a, a, it's a fish. It was in a fish tank yeah, cleaner, like a, and a couple took it and the man died. Exactly. And the, the woman was severely ill as well. They were vomiting and, and had serious problems and so what i think that people need to understand because some people have defended and some people go like well what if it ends up being the actual cure it might end up working for some people it might end up being a great option that they need to mass produce but just jumping in so early and claiming such a victory is going to impact people who don't understand this who won't necessarily ask their doctors who don't know their own medical history or who don't know the drug interactions you could be on other medication there's lots of medications you shouldn't take and this could be one of them so having multiple options and having your doctor evaluate you or having a health professional evaluate you is the best thing. And yeah, it's just so frustrating to know. Of course, everyone wants to find the cure and everyone wants to be excited about all these potentials oh, and we God. should be. But the way it was said and even on Twitter, just to be like, we are, we're almost there with chloroquine is the best thing. Like these are the drugs we need to be using. It's just such a weird thing to see coming out and so irresponsible. It's so, And it also, for me, reading all about this what i found so frustrating is it undermines the complexity of what is happening in your body and the complexity of science you know donald trump does not understand science like we know that for a fact and so and that's okay that is okay exactly if he can rely Rely on on professionals around him and so the fact that he said it with such confidence i think also just undermines and well it's going to mislead the general public into thinking there is going to be this drug that you take that like pew, 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 pew shoots the virus, which is never going to be the mm-hmm. case. So that's um, something that I just found about on top of it all, just reading this was like, oh my God, there's no way that he understands the nuances of this. I can't believe he has the ability to just say these things. Right, yeah. But chloroquine we should talk about because that is what is really being talked about right now as an antiviral treatment that Donald Trump has said, you know, is a gift from God which is like cuckoo. Remember when they asked Donald Trump to like talk about the Bible? And he's like, let's not get into details here. Like he clearly <laughs> like he clearly never he can't read. read he's not reading the Bible. <laughs> so, um, uh, I think maybe we'll take a little break and do like a comment corner or something okay, like that. Cool. Yeah. Like to see, because we've got lots of nice little comments on uh, YouTube I saw. Yeah, why don't we do that? Cool. Comment corner. Okay, so while Greg has a comment loaded up, I just want to remind you guys, we appreciate it so much when you leave feedback, when you leave nice comments. And even if you're on YouTube, we'd love and appreciate if you go somewhere like iTunes, leave a review, leave a rating. It helps our little podcast show find more eyeballs or ear, ear balls. Ear balls. Ear balls. Cochleas. Um, yeah, more cochleas to listen. So we appreciate it. And in the meantime, Greg. And if anyone doesn't know what a cochlea is, it's actually the snail shell t- shaped thing in your ear full of fluid, which then moves the hair, helps with your balance and helps you here okay <laughs> all right who's so this is comment? from double a movies this is a Ooh. youtube comment a U- <laughs> this is a non-toxic 
YouTube yeah, comment. It's dangerous space. There. Yeah, it's dangerous there. <laughs> it doesn't just say like burn. Okay. <laughs> I listened to the audio podcast, but just wanted to take the time and leave a comment here. Love your guys' podcast, and I really enjoy being kept informed and learning through your content. Keep up the great work from Double A Movies for days ago. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Yeah, it is nice. And YouTube's a nice space. Obviously, we're so grateful for everyone who also just listens to the audio version, but YouTube's nice because people can directly comment under that podcast, which is kind of cool. No, a, a little easier thing. to keep track of. But if you aren't on YouTube, if you're listening, always feel free to hashtag side note podcast, whether that's on Instagram or Twitter or most platforms. And we check those and Someone just wrote, answer your questions. Bro, Mitch called him ma'am. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It's like he always calls me to gay culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, enough comments on there were like, "Are they gay?" I was like, "Is this not enough evidence?" Like, can't you tell? For those who don't know, yes, we're gay. We've been living and dating. For oh like my god! This, okay, years. wait. This is a really funny one. This and sorry, I'm not just gone down the hole. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is offensive because I mean it in a really good way. But when I first saw you guys in person at the Buffer Fest in Toronto in 2013, you guys were doing a chat with the audience, and Greg kept looking at Mitch with googly eyes and. <laughs> Mitch had a RBF, resting bitch face. That's oh. misogynist. So I thought that this poor gay Greg guy has a crush on his straight roommate, Mitch. Oh and I honestly just felt really bad for Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so when I found out that you guys were already a couple, I was mainly just really happy for Greg. That oh he doesn't have to gosh. suffer being secretly in love with his straight roommate. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is my feminine voice just like popping Also, off. that is the flip of usually you get called out for RBF. Oh my God. Is, I got called out. Another it, comment on this video was like, if you go to 3804, look at Greg's, <laughs> looks like he's going to kill you. And it cuts and it's like my face like giving, so sorry to the audio content listeners, but, and I'm just like we're looking not used dead. To, we're, we're having to switch it up because we're not used to like engaging with the camera while we record. I feel like my brain's on fire when we do this because I'm just not, I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. And me too. It feels like my brain's on fire. Me too. Me too. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, why don't we get it. back into COVID-19 treatments? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Imagine so, I was a frog beside you. You're like, oh my God, the <laughs> spell <laughs> worked. So I think the next best step is to talk about where are we at? Okay, so you so mentioned let's start chloroquine. With chloroquine. Yeah, and hydroxychloroquine. What, what are, yeah, what are these treatments, these drugs that are being talked about in the news now and what can we expect? So chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, which is just the same chemical structure as chloroquine, but with a hydroxy group on the end. Oh, who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? <laughs> organic chemistry. I licked her. I hate to say this because people are like, you're annoying, but I loved organic chemistry <laughs> because I, I love visual art. Like my minor was in visual art. So I like to draw hmm. and to paint and it was sort of like drawing meat science. Anyway, okay, well, I was on <laughs> you just spend an hour drawing one molecule in the <laughs> yeah. exam and then it's like over. shading yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, it's beautiful, but you literally answer. You, one yeah, question. Makes no sense. <laughs> um, so there's the reason we're talking about this is so one study in petri dishes did find that uh, now uh, labs are actually um, creating the virus within the lab and testing it uh, like on with cells. these treatments okay so and you, not creating the virus but using the virus right? using the virus but no yeah. scientists now that oh, we have wow. enough information about oh, it like they're make, actually able to yeah make they're literally making the virus in labs to then okay. test on wow but anyway, so they when they actually tested this in petri dishes and on cells, again, not in animals or in humans, they found that chloroquine was able to um, decrease the replication of the virus. And they think it has to do with the pH. Like this is, again, why Donald Trump said this so early, because everyone's not totally sure. But when a virus enters a cell and potentially when the um, co uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID-19, enters your cell, part of your cell's defense is to like release acid increase the acidity to kill the virus which actually okay. this virus thrives on so that's not good okay. and what this drug seemingly does is uh makes your cell more basic <laughs> and therefore will actually um inhibit the virus's ability to replicate okay ultimately by changing its environment but this is again that's the hope that's this is, the theory this is like yes we cannot say this is for certain again, that's a really important caveat for even a lot of science even many drugs that are actually implemented and used we know they work but we don't even necessarily always know exactly why of course many many drugs we understand the mechanism but that's a perfect example where it's used to impact something they might see that it works but they might be like we think it's because the acid is decreasing or increasing or, or like whatever, do you right? remember, like like viagra came out of like a heart medication that yeah that like people were like trying <laughs> men were trying clinical trials and they realized they weren't 
ever giving back the medication when they stopped and they're like <laughs> why and they're like oh well we actually got these like amazing boners and they were like wait what and then later they realized i do with not nitrous oxide and figured out oh how viagra gives you a rock hard bone bone um, um okay so <laughs> Imagine me, imagine, and lastly, chloroquine gives you a big old erection. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they have done clinical trials, and this is one thing I want to talk about, which is that the reason we can do clinical trials on chloroquine or the other drug I'm going to talk about, remdesivir, is because these drugs have already been tested in petri dishes, in animal models, in clinical trials, and worked for another viral disease or another um, like parasite, parasite or something that. Essentially, what it means is that you can give people these drugs and they're not going to right. get... They know they won't die unless there's other issues existing with them. Yeah, like, but like this is why we're able to rush to actually right. giving clinical trials of these drugs on people because they have antiviral effects in other ways and right. because they haven't, you know, made people really sick when they've done it with a bowl. Yeah, like example. to be clear, people have died by just taking chloroquine. Obviously, it wasn't straight up chloroquine. But no, but that was too... So are you talking about the people with the fish tank cleaner? Yeah. That's I just, too high I mean, a dose. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, sorry, these. I just wanted to clarify that these drugs can kill, but obviously in certain ways, like scientists, research, doctors already know that these drugs can be safely administered they've been tested and Actually, given that they're the right dose that is a really good point because a lot of the reason why maybe in your life you've heard a lot about antibacterial uh, medication like we all take antibiotics a lot and that antibiotics if you look at how far along we are with research according to a wide variety of these studies they say antibiotic research and drugs are a lot further along than antiviral medication. Part of that reason is because the sciences are grossly underfunded by governments, which is something that we are going to be talking about as we move forward now and through this pandemic, how we cannot allow that to happen again. Donald Trump. Okay. Well, I can't I go off about him all the time, but he has been, you know, attacking science for the last three years, trying to defund it. Then here we are relying on it in his country. So just, and this not is just so, America all over the, world. all over the world. The science is because constantly undermined it's this, for the economy. Well, it's also this idea that you, like a scientist would say, hey, pay the price now to avoid the hefty cost later, exactly. which will be triple or quadruple Which we cost. are seeing right now. But it's it's the same, and maybe we've said this in other podcasts or videos, it's the same problem that vaccines are a product of their own success. People stop and don't believe vaccines because they don't see the problems mm -hmm. that exist without them. So many people in society only hear about the issues or the chemicals or whatever that are in vaccines, but aren't realizing there's literal diseases that killed millions of people for hundreds of years. So yeah, they say that vaccines are a victim of their own success. And I think it's the same with any science. It's a victim of its own success because if it works, we actually go, was that a waste of money? Like nothing bad happened. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's one reason why antiviral medication is so not as far along, okay. but it's also because there's a really, really fine line between efficacy, toxicity. So like the, the, the chloroquine is a great example. When those people took it from that fish tank cleaner, it was uh, such a high dose that it killed them. Mm. But at low doses, it's relatively safe, maybe causes itchiness, fatigue, but it also is preventative against malaria. It's good for lupus and might be really helpful with coronavirus. So it's like, obviously the dose is the poison for every single thing in the world. Right. If you have too much of anything, it can kill you. But antiviral medication, there's a really fine line. So it's really okay. important to be studied like rigorously. To get and that exact exactly. amount. Exactly. So and we brought that up because you we're talking about like chloroquine can be deadly as we've learned, but on small doses that it, it is, has been proven to be safe, which is why we have these clinical trials of which most famously was the one from Fa France on 36 people of which 20 people were administered it along with an antibiotic. So again, it's like what, you know, which really did help. And it, it, it helped people, but also some people who were administered that ended up in the ICU and some died. So it's a, an extremely small study where there was some, some hope it was promising you can't ignore that that's why they've gone into even more clinical testing of this anti antiviral drug uh, but there was also a study in china of 200 people where it helped with fever that's good too but there was also a study in china that also found that there was no impact so when it comes to chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine there's a lot of clinical trials happening right now that are extremely important and we have four to six weeks to then see these results and find out if it's like a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a thumbs in the middle as in it didn't do anything good or bad. Like, mm -hmm. And maybe we need to have it as a cocktail. So 
that's why it's it's not not exciting you know what donald trump said was a gross overestimate of what is happening actually right now according to the science but it's still being tested and there's also a really um good study that the who is doing where they're giving people rems desivir which i'm gonna talk about now um and then uh hiv cocktail then an hiv cocktail plus interferon which is another antiviral medication and then um uh, chloroquine. So it's like okay. these four separate groups getting all of those things right now. Those are being tested on people right now. Again, we will wait a month, two months, three months to see these results. And that's when we can start to be like, okay, you know, where are we at? Is it thumbs up? Is it thumbs down? And then we continue to like increase the amount of people getting this. But I wonder if some people might be wondering why. So you've mentioned one reason that antivirals might be less common than antibiotics, but is it the same with the, like a common cold or the flu or do we think that it's more likely that a a common cold doesn't typically kill people so there's less research funded towards creating antivirals for something like that yes your body there's also the like flu if- is mutating so frequently mm-hmm. every year and that a preventative measure is always better than having to find a cure for sure but and the, but i mean those like antiviral medications can be used in a variety of ways there's also other issues with this it's like animal models are a lot easier for antibiotics than they are for antivirals like there's a, along all the chains of developing drugs it's just it's just it reaches more challenges plus mm-hmm. again it's like now, I'm not going to be surprised if after this and moving forward, there's a lot more funding for antiviral treatments because there's like sometimes like that's just what you need is is like mm-hmm. history right. to change the course of well, science. Well, we hope because there is also historical evidence of a lot of money being dedicated towards things. And then years after those emergencies are over, they kind of go, actually, we don't really want to give money to that anymore. Yeah. And like <laughs> remsdesivir, which is a viral mRNA polymerase inhibitor. So that's what I was just talking about earlier. Okay. That's that specific enzyme, the one that reads RNA, makes more RNA, and then that, whatever we can go through. <laughs> I don't want to just like go off on the cell biology of it again because I do love it. But um, that was used to treat Ebola. But while doing um, this testing, they realized it's actually like quite a broad antiviral. So that's why that's now going into clinical trials. And again, it's already been tested in cells, in animals, in, <laughs> yeah, like sorry, in petri. No, I know. I just meant like the 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 term in cell. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's what came to my mind. I was like, wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> Let's just test all the really in cutting cells. edge, dangerous <laughs> stuff in in cells. <laughs> um, but um, it's gone through all that process mm-hmm. to then be, you know have the efficacy to be given to people. And usually, it takes six years to go from oh wow uh, from from initial stage or an f- initial stage of the concept of an antiviral drug to then be given to people. Okay. So again, we are right now testing things that have already that's been, why they might yes. if they work if we have clinical trials and evidence yes. that they're safe and, and they show antiviral properties along all of those stages okay let's try this okay yeah mm. and so that's sort of like where we're at but again the the, the virus we now understand it it's made up of tw- 29 like genes and proteins like so we now know what those genes and proteins are so what people are doing is going into like data banks and just sort of cross-referencing those genes and proteins with all right. the medication and thinking like, like wait is there any other drug any that other drug? impacts this yeah exactly and we can use that in a mix a computer of other definitely does that wow <laughs> that's really interesting okay i hadn't thought of that how yeah do we have other drugs that exist that we know would have an impact on this virus so basically? again it's like you can definitely like it's amazing that we are able to sequence the virus and understand so much about it to hopefully be like what other you know, drugs could maybe mimic affecting this from a physiological, cellular, biological perspective that will continue to happen. So you will probably keep hearing about new antiviral medication. Chloroquine will become like the talk of this week and there'll be another one next week. And right. we, we just have to wait and see these results. And in the meantime, do what we all need to continue to be doing, which is physically distancing mm-hmm. and staying home. And I think that that's every week I feel like we give you a little insight into what we're going to be making our next videos about. And I just know we need to keep talking about that as science communicators. Yeah. So people do wonder, not let up on this, especially I mean, as the weather us, gets nice. I think ask us your questions about, I even have some questions about physical distancing. Maybe it's worth doing a mini podcast on that. Cause I think there are, or even a video, a lot of people are like, Hey, can I still go for a walk? Can I go for a run? How often can I go to the grocery store? Can I interact with this person or that person? You know, my grandma needs assistance. What should I do in order to visit her and bring her groceries? I think there's a lot of genuine questions. Yes, there are stupid people who are going Though to parties. you bet there's stupid people. Who are still going to parties. Like I saw what? something. No, about, there's not. I saw something announced today that there was like some group. I don't remember where it was in the States, but they had a coronavirus party. And now they're in, a couple of them are infected, I think. What but, do you mean a coronavirus? 
coronavirus I don't, party. I don't know yeah. if it like I don't know if it was to make fun or if they were like, no, we're all isolating together and having this party. But there's like we just all need to take this really seriously. And I know it's hard, but if we do it now, we at least can get a hold of what is happening and, and buying understand. time for these antiviral medications to be researched. Yeah, for the that is to be researched. literally the entire point. Not only the vaccine, the antiviral medications, and, and to workers. help the hospitals not be overwhelmed. That's why we're doing all this physical distancing and social isolating. But I do think all, t- all that to say that there are some genuine questions. So whether you're on YouTube or you want to message us on Twitter or Instagram, let us know the kinds of questions. There's, you know, there's lots of weird little things. I saw one the other day on the news that was like, can I bake food? Food for someone else, or would that transmit the virus? So lots of or like things. yeah, wasn't it? Will the heat? Yeah, kill does the, the heat virus? kill it, or is that a concern? Um, so we're happy to talk about that. I have questions myself. I'm happy to look more into that information, or maybe bring someone on the podcast or episode who can who is a health official. We need to do, we need to like I've been on podcasts this week on Zoom. I'm like we need to figure that out. Like why are <laughs> I like, like oh my god? Well, we I'm the tech bro out. here, so clearly I've got to figure that out. Uh, yeah. Also, well, also I'd love to talk to your sister. I mean, if she's has a chance she's a respiratory therapist her job is so important and i think it it would be so interesting to understand ventilators yeah how ventilators work how someone like her functions in the hospital what her role does and And what it feels like to go from you know obviously being such an important part of society to being the most important part of society yeah and yeah and having that pressure and working in a hospital we have a few friends who work as nurses or in hospitals having them kind of talk about their experiences i think that might be really interesting so maybe there's a possibility that we could do many episodes i don't know i'm just kind of brainstorming out loud yeah i'm like this is what we're we're, you're or or we're telling the audience do our work for us no i guess i'm 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 curious what people are interested in because we've been getting lots of questions and not just us people have so many questions and i think we okay then let me let me spin this on to you so what are you most often thinking about when it comes to science in this current pandemic. So obviously you go about your day and you bake and you distract yourself. But right. what are you what are you personally most thinking about? It kind of has been evolving just like the disease has been evolving over time. So I had a moment where it was just curious about how the virus works. Then I recently had the moment where we're seeing I don't want to say more and I don't want to scare people, but more young people than initially who are have been infected and have shown severe symptoms, something like 20% of people between 20 and 44 are represented as hospitalizations. So then I'm curious, oh my gosh, is there something about certain types of bodies, certain types of people, things like that. Um, And then I often now I'm thinking about, okay, this might be a long time, even if, even if extreme physical distancing and social isolation only lasts X amount of time, is this going to impact the rest of this year where we might have to be changing the way we grocery shop, changing the way we go out and do our lives and go to parks and those kind of things. And so I'm thinking, how does that play in my mental health? Can I mentally prepare? That's why I really want to do a video about that because I think not only will it be interesting to look back and understand how it impacts our mental health, but how can we be prepared ahead of time? If for example, we're locked up for five months. Yeah. I'm the type of person who would rather be like, like when we play that game about when can we go to restaurants, I go as far away as I can into the future. As to possible. like mentally to f- prepare. My mental preparation is saying, okay, I'm trapped in my house for a year. Whereas some, I think maybe you're a little different, but I can use other friends as examples who go, wait, I don't want to think like that. That's right. going to freak me out. I'd it's rather think like- optimistically. And then when that day comes, I'll, I'll change my Yeah, I think tone. I'm a little more like that than you. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I want to be realistic, but I don't want to dread everything right now. So why be afraid of the worst case scenario? And for me, it's less about being locked up it's more about how many people will die how extreme will this get i don't really want to think totally i want to be educated and i want to be aware but i don't want to go so far the line that i'm feeling literally fear and dread every day when that might not happen i when love we that might like, put these the like three seconds after your alarm goes off in the morning and you're like tis the morning and like the birds are <laughs> chirping and you're like i wake up pandemic yeah. you know what i mean and it's like it takes like three seconds for you to uh-huh. clue in and be like so the dream i just had was not reality not reality <laughs> and reality is actually a little the bit dream. more of a nightmare <laughs> and feels a bit more like a dream oh boy okay uh, was there anything else that you felt was left out of this antiviral conversation no i think questions? that was a uh, go watch our video on asap science which will be at, if you're listening to this it as a podcast immediately 20. we freaking love you <laughs> and we're looking you dead in the eyes and saying to you right now 
We love you. Uh, but this is going to come out on Thursday, we April think. 2nd. We think. That's true. I mean, it could We're come out a little, little, little later, but the yeah. audio version of this podcast might be out first, but this video won't be out. In which so. case, go watch it because I think a lot of the cellular biology that we talked about, it's really, for me, I'm a visual learner. I always have been. It's part of what's drawn me to science. It's such a visual medium and it's fascinating to learn visually. So go watch our video. That will definitely help a lot. And then, yeah, ask us more questions. I just have. realized... Um, Tomorrow, when this podcast comes out, is April 1st. So, trick ya. No, I mean, like, what <laughs> if we were all just like, if April fools, it's nothing's real. You're in a dream. You're, I don't know. That would who, be nice we all said like. that? Or if some, <laughs> like, like, if coronavirus was just like, <laughs> it's a dream. It's a joke. April fools. <laughs> Miss Rona. That'd be, that would, that would, no, that wouldn't be funny. I'd actually be like, wouldn't you know what, Miss Rona? Either. That's not funny. Well, you then know? maybe we'd be like, hey, we well, should actually prepare for this next time. That's another thing I want to talk about. Okay, how do we actually be prepared next time this happens? I know we're in it now, but this is a good lesson to start preparing for the world we live in. That's so We used connected. to be like, what should we do a video about? Now we're like, we have so much to <laughs> Too do. Many. Like but that's, that's, that's important. It's important. Oh, it's important. man. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate it. Always thank you for watching, leaving comments, leaving ratings. Uh, use the hashtag, side note podcast, if you want to chat or leave a comment. You on just YouTube. said hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag. Um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Listening, and I guess we'll talk to you next time. Anything yep. else, Greg? Any last minute? Listen to Avril Lavigne. It helped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's sick. Bye. Okay, bye, you guys. <laughs> da, da, da.